Indeed. Right. Yeah. So it's so been a been a big big week or so, isn't it? It's it's been a big week. Yeah. So uh what what from your perspective, what's been the highlights of the of the week for you? Uh I mean certainly the fact that we're seeing some uh we're seeing a lot of the things of the those who are being hypocritical, the nations, uh the United States and his stance uh very hypocritical point of view and also we're also getting to see some of the traitors towards the uh towards the palestinian people for example erdogan trying to present himself as though he's fighting for the palestinian cause but what he's doing in the back end he's actually sending all the necessary equipment etc food and other things that's necessary for the survival of those who are killing the palestinians so uh, he's been brought out in that regard so all of those who are trying to play both sides of the fence, they're being exposed. And that can present a problem for them should the population rise up against them. So it's going to be interesting to see how to deal with uh, how to deal with King Abdullah in Jordan. Uh, you know, if he continues on this path, they may run him up out of there. So we'll see how that goes. Indeed. Do you know? Indeed. I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to mention... Uh, Abdullah, you know, I'm just going to call him that. Um, but for political purposes, I understand why you call him King Abdullah. But yeah, they're going to end up running him out of there because, um, you know, like you said, on one hand, they are pro-Palestinian. On the next hand, they're helping the Israelis shoot down missiles coming from Iran. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, it's going to get really chaotic, but I'll get into my perspective and I'll let you finish out the week. Well, well I was going to say, what's... Um... What is the perspective from from over there in the land? Um, well, like I said, I'm south of the land, not too far, about an <laughs> hour, five minutes um, from the uh, Taba border. But uh, as far as what's going on in the land, is the, you know, the, it's it's chaotic. It's chaotic. You got the Israeli government breaking down. They don't know how to respond to this Iranian attack which was a very strategic attack and it mm. did a lot more damage than what the news media is saying it did. And it also revealed to the Israelis that their Iron Dome is, is, is penetrable because they did it. And they did it with strategic, well thought out planning and precision. Plan precision, there you go. And what is so scary about this situation is they let them know they were coming. Mm. They let them know a few days before that they were coming which showed that they have very lack of respect for the Israeli um, military capability. Um, also, this was a warning that says that this is about to be a big and long war um, if y'all continue on this war path, We're bombing our consulates. And if y'all retaliate, there's going to be twice as much damage. But they didn't already cause $1 billion worth of damage on these rockets and missiles that they shot, which uh, none of them was carrying nuclear warheads, but it's possible they can. So, like I said, I want to get into more of that, too, as what's going on with our people. But I want to just tackle on what's going on with the Israelis for a minute. Their government is divided. On one hand, you have the far right wing, which controls Benjamin Netanyahu and the only, you know, thing between him and prison. So, because, uh, you know, he's been caught up on fraudulent charges, you know, and things like that. And that's been kind of kicked down the road ever since he then got this back in with the far right wing. Uh, who's very, very, very uh, pro-Israeli. Um, their agenda is to wipe the Palestinians out of the land. Also, um, they're pressuring him to attack Iran immediately. But on the other hand, you have like uh, Benny Gantz, who is, you know, has a lot of affiliation with the Israeli IDF military. They know that they can't fight al Iran alone. So they're trying to gain regional support, which they will never get. Um, unless you got, like I said, people like Erdo, um, Turkey, um, Jordan, you know, those places, but they're heavily outnumbered. So I think even when this comes, they're going to switch sides. But they're expecting support from this regional area. But even the United States said they won't help them attack Iran. So you have a lot of situations that's going on within the Israeli government. Um, and like I said, uh, to me, I really feel that the far right wing is going to end up pressuring Benjamin Netanyahu into attacking Iran as, as soon as possible. Um, but like I said, that stands between him and prison. So I don't want to be too long with that. I want to move on to our people who are in Demona, 
Well, one of the targets that Iran plans on hitting is the Mona, because the Mona has a nuclear reactor there. And um, yeah, that's one of the targets. They had the capabilities of launching missiles and attacking about five nuclear sites along the Negev Desert in Israel, and the Mona is one of them. And of course, we all know that we have a community there amongst the so-called African Hebrew Israelites in the Mona. So to me personally, because of the things that have come out and they, the Most High have revealed, uh, their judgment could be soon because they're also fighting in the IDF, fighting alongside of the enemy, which who is at war with Yah. And if you fight along the enemies of Yah, you're at war with Yah yourself. So, um, but you, did, you do have people who have branched away from them. You have people in different areas, the Miss Pei Ramon in the South, you have people in Arad towards the north, northern Negev. You have also our people in Ascalon. Some is in Beersheba, commonly called Beersheba. So, you know, I do think that the most high possible will judge that community, but not all of them will be wiped out. So that's just my take on it. There's a lot of chaos going, panic, and people out of there. And to me, that's just prophecy on its way to being fulfilled where they will be run out of our land and judged in their land. Was it? The people in Demona, because uh, they signed up with the Israelis, so are they fighting with the Israelis? Yes, yes, they have a one hundred percent enlist rate. Wow! And what I mean by that is, is that once their children, boys or girls, once they graduate from high school, they enlist and go straight into the military. That's a deal that they made with the Israeli government. And just to give you a little history on how that took place, um. In the earlier years, when they were there, they asked to join the Israeli government, but the Israeli government refused. And when they refused, they marched up to Jerusalem to protest. So they actually protested to, to enlist and to join their army. And now you have it so. Now they have an 100% enlist rate, and all their young and their, their children, boys and girls, are enlisted. And I don't know if you had, uh, though, if you are privy to what happened to the sister, I really forget her name. But this was some years ago. There was one of our people amongst the IDF that was killed. Um, they said it was friendly fire. She shot herself. But when they did a more of an investigation, they said there was no way that she could have took her own life. So you have some of our people who have enlisted, who have lost their lives in the Israeli government, in their army, uh, since we started joining that, um, that army in uh, the earlier years of the 80s. Mm. That's um, that that shocks me actually. So um, our people basically begged the Israelis to to fight for them. Yes, indeed. Actually, it was a it was a sit down protest. So they stood in one of the government establishments, had a sit down for three days, three days protesting to join their army. Because you got to remember, they started to deteriorate ever since they started digger, digging deeper and deeper into idolatry. Because they worship Ben and Me Carter, okay, known as Ben and Me Israel, okay, who's no longer with us, but at the same time, he still holds a lot of stronghold on their subconscious mind because they really truly believe that he is the most high, he is their savior. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the more and more and more they sort of going deeper and deeper into idolatry, the more and more and more. Because when they first got there, it was good. You know, they built the moon up from the ground up, they built schools, they had farms. You know, but eventually they started selling all their farms. They sold their, their gold mine. They had a recipe, a vegan recipe, which they sold to the Israelis. And now the Israelis commercialize all their 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 uh, their vegan recipes and they're making billions and billions of dollars off their recipes. So as you can see, they started to deteriorate and they started needing funding from the government, you know? So when the government had finally accepted because of Ben and Cardi selling his people out, you know, they accepted the deal, started giving them Medicaid, started getting our people hooked on drugs out there. You know, the same medical industrial complex that our people are being um, are being attacked from in America, UK and other places. They've been the same thing happening in the communities in Demona, in Israel. There a lot of them are under this medication. A lot of them have turned to drugs, alcoholism, a whole lot of things going on there, you know, and it's because of the leaders of that establishment has failed them tremendously. And I think that one day that their judgment is coming soon. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot going on. So, so essentially, Israel for for our people is like a little America, really, isn't it? Absolutely, it's like that, that community is like a beautiful, nice cake. Icing is all nice; it's pretty outside, but in the middle, it's molded inside. 
And uh, so like I said, just bringing back to my perspective that that community will be judged for the wickedness that they have done in the, in the land since they returned. Not all of them, but like I said, you had people who have stirred away from them, but the Mona could possibly be hit in this war. And I think it's a lot of panic going on amongst them as well. You know, for all that I've, uh, I've seen on uh, Al Jazeera and, you know, Al Jazeera RT as well as uh, Press TV that I are, uh, you know, when I'm looking at these channels, you, you, you wouldn't believe that our people are somehow caught up in the midst of this because you never see them. So what is the... Uh, what is the report on them, Brother Dawid, if you're aware of anything? Because I haven't heard anything from them specifically uh, on how they're doing since this whole situation started, because you don't see any of them being broadcasted on the news or anything. And mm -hmm. I don't know of anyone that knows anyone in that community, per se. So how are they faring, considering all of the hardships that uh, Israel, the land, is enduring at the moment? Do you know? Um, I, I apologize. I was going to get my charge. I heard, heard pretty much everything you said. Just the first part. Who are you referring to exactly? I'm speaking to the brothers that's in the Mona right now. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm in contact with a few of them. Um, one in particular, he's no longer in the Mona. He's on the outskirts um, in another town and city. But um, having a conversation with him, you know, I was talking to him how <laughs> you know, I think that they is, is it will be wise for them to counsel amongst each other and try to figure out how they can get those people out of that army. Um, yeah, so as far as what's going on there, it's pretty much like it's, it's really quiet. A lot of people are not really, um, like you said, they're not too keen on their communities per se. But, you know, uh, me, I'm, I'm focused on them and other people around them are focused on them. And the morale is, is that, you know, they're fighting along the Israelis. They're going to war. They feel that that this war is part of their war. They feel that they have to protect their land. You know, so that's pretty much their mindset. They feel that it's necessary for them to join with the Israelis because they feel that their situation, their circumstances is, you know, what they feel <laughs> is at stake. So um, I hope that answers your question. It does to some degree. Okay. I'm. I don't. I don't know about anybody else, but I. It. It feels to me this whole situation looks like they're trying to. They're trying to bring on this war. <laughs> you know, we we've been we've been sort of uh, um, feeling that you know this is sort of coming for for years now. Um, they're trying to start it, but nothing is actually working. Um, is that is that just is that just my impression? It, you know, it feels like the you know the. The wheels have fallen off of their uh, their propaganda campaign or their their agenda machine, um, mm -hmm. and it's not it's not working for them yet at, at this point. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, you know, it's they they kind of they got caught up in the web. You know, it's been so much going on. You know, the situation with Gaza has really kicked this off. You know, people really started seeing these people for who they truly are. They always knew about the occupation. You know, but to, for them to be in there bombing indiscriminately, like basically an attack on on the civilians, you may might as well say. But let me just give y'all um, some truth of the matter: the the Israeli army is getting their behind kicked. Okay, they're getting their behind kicked. Um, you know, the enemy media is not going to put it out there, but they have lost a lot of soldiers. You know, going up into Gaza. Um, Gaza being equipped with a more high power arsenal from Iran and through, through the you know the, the the channel that they go through, um, yeah, it's 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 bad. But like you said, uh, Elder Dave, like it's revealing them for who they truly are, and it's revealing other countries as well, like the United States, Britain, and all those who are still supplying um, the Israelis with these weapons. The whole world is seeing them for who they are now, and uh, even the people amongst them. Truth be told, it's a civil war going on in the midst of Israel between mm -hmm. the civilians that they don't talk about. They might say it every now and then with the protests, but there's a very, very, very strong divide amongst that uh, society nowadays, you know? And um, even when talking with the brothers from Demona, you know, I was telling him, basically he was saying that they support Israel and they support Palestine. I don't know how they can do that, but um, he was saying basically they support both sides. At one point, you gonna have to make a decision you know, and uh, as of right now, they're choosing the side uh, of the oppressors. Yeah, 
but all the world's seeing the Israelis, what, what they're actually doing. Everybody's waking up. It's only the government, like in America and in, in the UK, what's supporting them. But the people, most of the people don't support the Israelis. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. You no. On matches and things like that. <clears throat> so, Dave, how, how, sorry. Go Brother ahead. Dave, on your point, uh, as far as them trying to bring this war about, you know, the evangelicals are in the, and the Christians are thinking JC is going to come through the sky to save them. They're expecting the rapture, right? So, but here, here's how I see this. We know that rapture is a bunch of nonsense. However, uh, as far as them trying to bring it on, I think I think these nations are doing their best not to bring it on. They're fighting to where, hey, look, let's just try to keep the peace. How can we work this out? Because the ramifications of any type of fighting is going to be drastic and, and world changing. And so they understand clearly, I mean, you're dealing with Iran. They're going to shut off that Suez Canal. They're going to shut down the Red Sea, the Mediterranean. There's going to be no oil and gas and all the other resources moving back and forth. That's going to cripple the U.S. economy. And plus, you're looking at uh, the BRICS simply moving away from the dollar. I mean, this is just a way of having this place fall on its face. And before it falls on its face, it will pull the guns out. It's really that simple. So uh, I'm thinking they're doing everything that they can. I think the Saudis are, are begging and trying to make sure nothing happens. So are the, uh, so are the Turks, et cetera, because it's a financial thing for all of them, along with the Chinese and the Russians. They have to have this uh, natural gas and these oils and different things in order for their economy to continue to run. So to have a shutdown of that and plus be committed to war, which is another expense, that can cause some problems both at home and abroad. So they're trying to kind of keep this thing calm. But I'm thinking it is my view that the Most High has appointed you at this place at this specific time and you will be there. So uh, they may be trying to avoid all types of, hey, how can we negotiate and try to keep the peace? But it's not going to work. So, um, so from from your perspective, what um, or from the perspective of the book, um, what what are what are we expecting then? I'm I'm looking to see. For me now, this is just me. Uh, my eyes are on the Golan. I've always felt that the Golan Heights are very important to, to really to, to kicking off of all of this from a serious manner. So when I'm start seeing some firings and little activities going on in the Golan, I'm thinking that okay, things are getting ready to to kind of kick up a little bit or, or tensions are getting ready to increase. And it has, and it will continue to. I'm hearing that uh, the Russians have now established uh, some units in the Golan Heights as well. So, uh, I mean, we'll see how this goes, but I'm thinking this cannot be too far away. But I'm thinking all the things that we are seeing right now, these are just the preparatory commands, so to speak. These are things that's preparing us to get ready for what's getting ready to come because it's going to be, it's going to be life changing the way we move about right now. I mean, that can go to work. I remember when 9-11 uh, took place and when I went to my job, all of a sudden you had to stop, open up your bags, open up your coats, et cetera, et cetera. It was kind of, uh, everyone was on their, on their P's and Q's. I'm thinking that these, the Muslims period, and the Arabs, I mean, they're all over. They live everywhere. They're in all of these uh, Western nations. I mean, a war like that breaks out, and and all of a sudden, you can't get on the bus like you normally do. Going into your job may change. Getting on a flight may change. I mean, these people are already in the midst of us, for, those, for them who may want to do us harm. So I'm speaking about us, the respective Western nations. So uh, this can get ugly both at home and abroad. And so uh, I'm expecting this thing to get worse. And uh, Iran is going to be a big player in the game. Iran has been there since biblical times. And, and when it's all said and done, Iran is still going to be there. Right. But s still, <laughs> call me naive, but uh, I still think um, all we need to do is get enough popcorn to see us throw. Yeah. 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 It's, because... it's, it's, it's getting interesting for sure. Uh, a lot of people are nervous and really don't know why to be nervous. And many don't know what to look for. But then again, there are many of us that do. And like I've stated in the last few videos, there's many of our men now that's actually standing up speaking in righteousness. However, I'm still seeing the vast majority of people. They're all about uh, everyone has been really excited about the black JC nowadays. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, so. Anytime we we seem to be 
headed towards the light, they always come out with something to make us kind of stand there and think, do I want to go to the left or do I want to go to the right? So it seems as though as soon as we are, are on the right track, here comes something to make us kind of reconsider, well, do we want to go this way or that way? And I think this black JC situation is something similar to that. Yeah, because even so, the, the Pope's coming out and uh, Putin and so they seem like they're all basically all together. Oh, we have to push this next agenda to yeah. get people confused and get back, get them back into the church. <laughs> Elderly, you mentioned something big, like you were talking about, you know, the money situation, what all this is going to cost. And truth be told, the to answer uh, Elder Dave's uh, question, I think he was saying that the Israelis want this war or not. And that is one of the reasons why they don't want the war, because just now it cost them a, a few billions of dollars just to shoot those rockets down that Iran has shot. It only cost Iran a couple a couple million. So that right there, and, and Iran has plenty of plenty of arsenal because they're getting us from Russia at a cheaper price. So to me, that's one of the reasons why they don't want the war with Iran. But on the other hand, like I said, they're being controlled by the far right wing who wants to try to establish the vision of being us. They are the people who's really trying to make it a full Jewish state. They have, they're in their mind that they're, that they're going to partake in building the temple of the Most High in Jerusalem. They're trying to establish this thing. So they want to do an ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians. You know, so they want that war, but I don't think that they'll be able to handle a, a multi-front war at this at the moment, especially once the U.S. starts pulling their protection back. Because I think, to me, you said it with the Golden Heights, but my person, for me, it's Iran. Once missiles start falling from Iran, it's way closer than I, I thought we were, you know, because um, I thought it was going to be Golden Heights situation between, you know, proxies in Syria and things of that nature. Maybe have a little few Iranian attacks from the Golden Heights. But this was a direct attack from Iran, you know, and this to me showed that there's some big players behind this. And in order for Iran to have been okay to do that, they had to get some okays from the big boys, Russia, China, you know, they really feel that they have support. So this can go into an all scale war, you know, between powers even behind that, I'll be honest. So that's my take on it. I think that they don't really want the war with Iran, but because of their pride that they're going to respond from that pressure coming from the right wing, and that's going to force them to a war that they can't win. But, but then, um, why would why would the Israelis bomb the the what's it the bomb the consulate? Was it the consulate, the embassy? Oh, yes. I honestly don't know. Why yeah, would they I do that? Have no idea why they did that. Well, their 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 whole rationale was that the high level officers that were part of the. Uh, the Revolutionary Guard, they were actually in that building. And they're the ones that were facilitating and doing all of the logistics to ensure that the rebels, you can call them the rebels of the resistance, uh, making sure that the resistance were able to uh, to be well-funded and to ensure that all the weapons were delivered to who needed to get them. They were pretty much the liaison to ensure that all the men in the field uh, were properly, properly supplied. So they, they took the chance to go ahead and kill them and... Uh, and take the risk. It was it was not a smart move, but then again, if the Most High has re, has, has actually taken away your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, everything coming out of the Israelis at this point would be nothing but military blunders and mistakes, because the Most High has taken his wisdom away from them. So there's nothing that they're going to do going forward that's going to be wise, which is kind of dangerous for the simple fact that if they possess nuclear weapons, as most people believe that they do, you you kind of figure the average mindset of them would be to, hey, look, man, if I can't have this land, no one else is going to have it. We'll go ahead and blow up, blow you up and blow us up too. So, uh, you know, at this point, if they feel they're going to lose the land, they may feel as though there's nothing to lose. And that's a very, uh, that's a dangerous place to be. Right. Well, one, the, the reason I mentioned uh, or asked that question is because, um, you know, just as we've got, um, you know, we've got the most high words, you know, to hand that tells us what's going going to happen. They've got, you know, the and let's let's call them the enemy. The enemy has got um, their own writings. So um, I believe it's uh, oh, name's just gone out of my head now. Had it had it on my uh, in my in my brain a minute ago. Um, it was. Uh, <laughs> 
the the Freemason, Albert Pike, Albert Pike, um, writing about the three world wars. So the plan was always it's already been written, uh, and uh, it was going to be the Third World War started in the Middle East. Um, and it looks like they've been trying to push that way, but it's not working. It's not working. So, um, you know, I'm, I don't know. I mean, I, I, that's why I asked you what the, you know, what do you think the, um, you know, scriptural basis of, of this actually is? For, for me, I'm, I'm thinking that the children of Israel has to be returned back into the land in order for us to uh, build a third temple. Uh, the Israelis right. may, may speak of a desire to build that third temple, but they've had 75, 80 years by which they've been in the lands. Uh, they have the military protection. They have the funding of the U.S. to the tune of $3 billion annually, maybe more. Uh, so therefore, they have had every opportunity by which to build that third temple if they were the children of Israel. But there are no Israelites among them. There's no Levites among, among them, excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, and so therefore, they're unable to build that third temple. Can't be done. <clears throat> uh, I and they've got the red heifer producing factory in, in yeah, Texas, haven't they? And, and, and all of that nonsense. <laughs> so, I mean, right now it is showtime. Uh, there's a few things that has to be brought forth to everyone. Uh, either A, they're right or we're right or we're both wrong. It's going to be one of the two. Okay, but our people, we're accustomed to hardship, etc. If we're wrong, and all we have to deal with is the fact that the European has murdered, slaughtered and, and slaughtered and enslaved us all over the earth. And we've just been militarily defeated and we do not have any armies or any cohesion in the midst of ourselves by which to take them on. So we're just going to have to take this kicking. That's just the way that goes. OK, it's either that or our strong one is going to deliver us like we believe that he will. So it's going to be one of the two. What I do know is that if a people, as the European has done, and gone to all the many lands, having no regard for one's borders, having no regard for the Most High's law, statutes, judges, precepts, where he can shed innocent blood and take lands. If he's allowed to keep these lands in peace and continue on the path that we have been on for all these centuries, then I don't know what to say. I don't see where that is. I don't see where that is the reality. I so, so therefore, someone has to step in and stop him. We're unable to. We see that this is not right what he has done. And there's no way in the world that the earth can afford to continue on such an unrighteous path. So something has to be done and it's going to be drastic. Very drastic. Very drastic. And um, from my perspective, like I said, as far as we are prophecy-wise, this is the, the the time for Esau's judgment to me. Everything has been shaping up, and it's for like just like we saw it was. It was supposed to come out. That's how it's happening, you know. Um, so, like I said, their time is up, and eventually they will have to pay for all the wickedness that they have done over the centuries. And uh, yeah, so all return energy returns at some point, and this is the time where their energy, their wicked energy that they displayed, has returned back on them for tenfold. Well, I'm still seeing the wickedness unfolding. I mean, I, I was just reading about um, um, the euthanasia being rolled out all over the world. So essentially legalizing murder. Uh, um, it's just like a hop, skip and a jump away from, from the state to saying, OK, these people need to die now. Um, we, call, we call it euthanasia, but these people need to die. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing... I'm seeing an escalation in the wickedness, um, which which would in indicate that we're you know we're speeding up towards the end. So yes, there is an end that I think is very near because uh, you know the the world cannot continue on this path of um, escalating wickedness. And, and plus, you have just after the eclipse, and you and you were saying. After the eclipse, there's always something going to happen. We, we don't know the timeline. It's a warning. It's a warning. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I might have been absolutely wrong about uh, about April 8th because um, I, I, saw, I saw a lot more than there actually was in there. But, I, you know, I'm not a prophet. You know, I've never said I was. Um, but 
it is a warning of something. Um, so I, I think the next, uh, the next, over the next year is going to be very interesting indeed. Interesting in the, the Chinese curse sense of the word. Mm-hmm. That's it. That you know, I'm looking to see something that you said. Uh, go ahead, Elder. No, go, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying, but one other thing I do agree with you, uh, Elder, Elder Dave, is uh, what you said earlier, kind of just getting your popcorn ready, um, because this is not this is just the beginning of something much more, more, more major in this region, and it's going to spread through all over the world. Because after this, the way I'm seeing it, the way I envisioned it, uh, the Israelis are going to lose this war terribly, and in in, in, in talking about in the worst way. Um, because they have all they already been defeated and they know it. Like I said, the 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 strategic plan, the strategic, the strategies that Iran has is to is it, it counteracts everything Israel tries to do. And they are in a place where they know they can't win this war. Um they was basically putting their trust in something which they thought was unpenetrable, but it finally it was penetrable. Um and uh like I said before, they are scribbling, scrambling for that. So but after this, I think there's going to be another big war between two fractions of Islam, Shuni, the Shiites and the Sunnis. And that's going to bring mm-hmm. Iran against Saudi Arabia. That's going to bring Iran against um, places like Jordan and all that type of thing. So it, it, it's, it's, going to get, it's going to get ugly in this region from as far as my eyes can see and the way that things are going. I see. Why do, why do you believe that? Well, it's Sunni against the Shiites. The one in Egypt, uh, the Egypt, uh, they, I, I don't know if they are Sunni or Shia. I want to say they're majority Sunni. Yeah, majority mm-hmm. Sunni. The reason we got to remember this war has been going back, shadow wars has been going back, dating all the way back to the early 2000s, um, maybe even before that. But, you know, you always had this type of beef going on, you know, between these two fractions in this area. A lot of your um, uprisings, like the things that happened in Iraq, you know, that was a change in over between Sunni and Shia. So that caused a big problem there. It, it just these two fractions have always been going to war. And I think that, um, like Elder Lee mentioned, this is a major route for trade. The Suez Canal with the Israelis really trying to build another canal going through the Gaza Strip. And I think, like I said, I think we talked about this before. If not, I might have been talking about it with somebody else. But I think that's one of the main reasons why they want to exile all the Gazans so they can take that land over and build their own uh, canal going to from Europe to East Asia. So this is a major, a major, this land right here, Israel is a major key uh, to what goes on around the world, pretty much. Um, so I think that, you know, once the Israelis are out, these two fractions are going to be fighting for power in this region. You know, it's going to be open season. Uh, and like I said, the two big boys, Saudi and Iran, I think that, you know, in their proxies and their alliances, you know, now they might be in agreement, but like y'all said, ain't going to be no peace. He's he raising up like a man of war, so he's going to divide all these people up. And that's how they're not going to be able to touch the apple of his eye, which is his people. So, so the Iranians, they are Shiites? They, they, whatever they are, they're different from... They were really hobbies, I think. They were, they were hobbies, I'm thinking. They've got like a different thing going on over there. Ah, Okay. Yeah, but like I, I just know that they're different from Iran, and that that's going to be the problem. So this is going to escalate to something bigger. So we've also got, um, you know, on the horizon. Yes, yeah, assuming that we are close, we've also got the day of vengeance. You know, that's that's supposedly coming. It's got supposedly coming soon. Should we say? I'm not saying supposedly coming, because the most I says it's coming, so it's going to be coming. Um, so, how close does anybody think we are to that? Uh, I, I don't even want to speculate, but I, <laughs> you know, I don't want to speculate on that. But I, I tell you what, uh, my view is that we just we the the land needs to be cleansed. Uh, it has to be cleansed for us to go back there, because the Israelis are certainly not going to let us back in there. Mm-hmm. But, that, and, but that's if that 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 if that is our land anyway, we don't, we we're not hundred percent sure. The land What's of Canaan, the Israel where, where it is now, is, is that the real land of Canaan? We don't, uh, we don't know. Well, I, sure. I, I don't, I don't see a contention for any other land. I don't see a contention. One brother was saying, "Oh man, the land is in the Philippines." I don't see any contention for that. 
They say it's in Africa. I don't see, see nowhere where any land is contested like that in Africa. Uh, some people say it's in Utah. I don't see that. That's why I'm stating that what we're seeing right now is showtime. It gets to all of these situations and these contentions become settled. We will find out exactly who the most high is. We'll find out exactly where his land is, who his people are. Many of our people here are about starting businesses and being entrepreneurs and in and, and, uh, black empowerment financial and things like that. That's all great. Uh, but with, if the Most High is going to do what I believe he's going to do, none of that will matter. So he'll make it He'll make it all plain and known to us to where a lot of these issues that we're having right now will be settled. Yeah, why, why are people um, starting businesses in a dying system? You know, yeah, I mean, you know, here's here's the thing too. Here's something that I would like to reiterate to people that's out here listening is that live your life. Just live your life in righteousness because, you know, some people are sitting around hoping for the destruction of this person and that person. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll quit my job and I'm going to take my insurance. I'm going to cancel it and sell my cars and my house and all this other madness. Look, walk in the most high's law, statute, judgments, precepts, and let it be what it's going to be and leave it at that. Don't go, you know, wishing that somebody get destroyed and all this other stuff. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen anyway. But all we have to do is to continue to walk in the law and, and do that which is right and deal righteously with those who deal righteously with you, regardless of their nation. But continue to live. Yeah, but isn't that sort of uh, that attitude, um, one coming from the camps? Because uh, the, the, the camps are all about, uh, you know, pointing fingers and saying who, who's going into slavery and destruction and stuff like yeah. that. Um, that's not that's not from, you know, the rest of us. Yeah, I mean, you, you've got those that's going to stand up and, and shout and, and do things to say things to upset the people, etc. Uh, I mean, our job is to teach the most high law, statutes, judges, and precepts to the children of Israel first. <laughs> Excuse me. But we're also to teach the nations the most high righteousness. So it's very hard to reach people if that's going to be your approach. But a lot of the guys is out there doing that. They're very young. So a young man's mentality is going to be different than how he delivered that message. Uh, not only that, they're mixing it with New Testament idolatry. So that's part of the confusion as well. Some of these guys, you can tell by their verbiage that uh, their whole vocabulary tells you these guys have spent some time in a cage someplace. So they you know what I mean? They've been incarcerated, some of them. Mm -hmm. So their delivery is, is going to be entirely different. And it's going to be unpalatable to, to, to those of us who are accustomed, who are in the quote unquote civilized world. So if a man speaks to you in that manner, uh, with vulgarities, et cetera, and hostility, it's hard for you to receive that message. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're to keep in mind that a lot of these men are young. Some of these men, like I, like I said, by their vocabulary, you can tell that they've been incarcerated. Uh, and so their perspective is going to be very much different. And they're, they're, they're moving in idolatry as well. So uh, not the best person to bring forth the most high law, statutes, judgments, precepts. And to be clear, I don't have a problem with someone who has been in the system, so to speak, and have reformed themselves. But we have a lot of grown men who have been in the system so long, that's all they know. They talk and move as if they're still in the system when they're free. So uh, you're going to have a lot of that, but I would like to think that a lot of our people are smart enough and they can use discernment uh, uh, and know exactly who to listen to, who not to listen to. All right. Well, <clears throat> you know, I I made I made a kind of uh, I guess foolish prediction of uh, April eighth as um, you know as a, a kind of second exodus. Um, but the thing, you know, leading up to it, the, the thing that sort of struck me is that um, our people aren't ready for an exodus yet. Um, you know, we're 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 kind of all over the place, really. So, um, even if the exodus was uh, even a year from now, I don't think our people are ready for it. Um, I, so I'm in two minds because I I feel like this the second exodus is close, but I'm also recognizing that we're not ready yet. A, a lot of us not even mo most of the Israelites not woken up yet, and if they are waking up, they're going to the 
New Testament as well. So it's yeah, but we've got we've got this idea that um, uh, once we once we leave, um, that's when the rebels will be purged. So um, it suggests to me that uh, we all leave together. You know, JC followers as well as uh, you know those who, who worship the Most High alone, and um, and that's when you know that's when we find out which one of us is right. Okay, yeah, well, then what, the people who's not following the Israelites at all, what they um, what they are by blood from uh, from from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the from that bloodline, mm. are they going to get? Purged is all Israelites going to get purged? Are only the ones what following the most time? Well, I I personally believe that um, once whatever it is the call comes for the Exodus, there will be a lot of our people who won't want to go. They'll you know they've got too much invested here. Um, they've got fear about the unknown. Whatever you know they they they're in love with society, um, and they won't go. But those who do. Then you know you're going to have the you're going to have the division between the idolaters and uh, and those who follow the Most High, um, and I think that's when the the purging in the wilderness comes in. You know, as as it pertains to that, we have to continue to look at the numbers game. If a tenth is going to return unto the Most High, you see ten brothers in the room, nine of them are dead. So therefore, if you look at our people now scattered to the four corners of the earth, there's many of us. We're all over the place, okay? Not so much in ideology and our mentality. We're all over the place geographically as well. So therefore, when you're speaking of a tenth, I mean, you're looking at a fraction of Israelites returning from all of these many lands. So if you look at us now and you look at us five years from now or five years ago, we would look as though we're unprepared. We are unprepared as a collective, but everyone's not going to make this journey. Mm -hmm. But the ones who are supposed to, that tenth, oh, we're good and ready. We're ready today. The ones who are walking in the law, statute, judgments, and precepts. And there's nothing that we can do for those who decide to walk out of the way. There's nothing we can do for them. Yeah, true enough. I mean, <clears throat> isn't it um, isn't it Isaiah that says, um, you know, that there will be so few men around that uh, you know, two men will be overjoyed to meet each other mm -hmm. you know, on the road. So, yeah, man, it'd be a rare <laughs> thing in the earth. I mean, but this is not just a man; this is a righteous man. So that's the thing. You know, I'm a man, and you, you fellas, you know, and hey, we're men. I mean, you, you, you can think of the friends you know or the guys that you know, and ask how many of them keep the Sabbath day. Chances are you're the only one. How many of them actually know anything pertaining to the law, statute, judgments, and precepts? Chances are you're the only one that walks in that law. And you, I mean, I know you know 100 people. Easy. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're the only one that's doing it. So that's just the way it goes. It's going to be the where a lot of people don't want to hear that. Like the most I said, hey, I mean, a lot of people that I know, men that I know, they want to speak of the most high with their mouth but their heart is far removed from them. They don't keep any laws and their behaviors are not in accordance to Torah. So many of them just will not make it. And we have to be comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. I'm, I've, I'm desperate to, to fellowship with somebody, but there's nobody to fellowship with. Yeah. Um, yeah. You say it's crazy because I'm from um, Manchester in the UK. And I know a lot of people there, but I only know one person who follows it. Who follows it. I only know one person out of everybody I know. That's a lot of people. That's a, I know a lot of people, but I only know one who's following the, in the law. Yeah, and, and that's and that's the thing. That's that rare man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that's just what we're going to have. Uh, very few men is actually going to walk in the most size law, statute, judgments, precepts. And like I've said, we've got to get comfortable with that. Look, you guys are way over there in England. I'm way over here in South Carolina. But yet we make time to converse and speak on things pertaining to the Most High that we may magnify his law, make it honorable and give glory and honor to his, to his holy name. We, we do that. And we're not even within range of each other. 
So uh, it may take that to where you have to reach out to a man across the across the other side of the world. But that if that's what it takes, so be it. Yeah. It's uh exceedingly rare to find somebody on on say YouTube who's um you know who isn't gonna start talking about JC. Um so yeah, yeah, yeah. they're gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> There's several people that uh talk about some you know great topics, but then they have to shoehorn JC into the conversation, and that's where I turn off. So yeah, it's very rare. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I'm thinking. I'm thinking the JC thing. I think it was easy to push that lie to people who are unaware, because they're not knowledgeable enough to contend with what's what's being said. But at the same time, when I look at the whole JC philosophy and ideology, it gives a lot of people comfort. It, it does, uh, but it gives comfort to those who are downtrodden. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, when you think of JC, he's supposed to be the savior. And he's coming back to save people, right? But I can see where our people will cling to that madness because we've been stepped on by the nations. So we want to be saved. Meanwhile, Europeans are screaming about JC coming back to save them. But I often ask myself, they're coming back to save you from what? Yeah. <laughs> you, you you own everything. You've you've murdered everyone and stolen their land and and you just continue to rule in unrighteousness all over the earth where you've gone. So who coming back to save you from what? And to save you from whom? There's no one oppressing you. Uh, so therefore, that doesn't make any sense from that perspective. But for our people, it gives them some sort of comfort that they will be delivered by someone. I mean, and it's someone that doesn't even look like them. And even if he does, it's just a fairy tale. And if you think on it long and hard enough, it just seems silly. Uh, but that's all they have. But obviously, the curses are turning around on them now. Right? Yeah, so yeah. that's what they they want to be saved from. You know, the, the hardships they're now having to deal with yeah, are, are, are far too much for them. For us, it's a Wednesday, but for them, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's tough. So, yeah, that's what they want to be saved from. Um, but there's also, um, uh, you know, there's the aspect of fear. Because along with this idea of, you know, sounding um, comforting, there's a fear of not following him because, you know, hellfire and uh, yeah, lake, yeah, yeah, lakes of fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, that goes both ways. Tell me a lot of our people are about that, about, oh, you're going to hell and, and all of this nonsense. But once again, everyone that I've come across that's speaking that type of stupidity are those who have just not read the book. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've got to be some kind of crazy to read the Book of Remembrance. I mean, I'm talking about read it, read it a couple of times, four or five times, nonstop, through and through, and then actually turn to that New Testament and believe that that's what it is, because it's, mm. it's 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 not even based in any type of reality, uh, and we should know that based on our experiences. But however, many of our people are like children. You tell them a story and they fall in love with it even when they grow up and realize that this is a lie, they still take a hold of it. You're, you've got many of our people who know Santa Claus is a lie and the Easter Bunny is a lie and all of these other things are lies. But yet, there are grown adults that will still raise their kids up in the way of these lies. So they refuse to let it go even when they realize that it's it's not true. So we've got many that's guilty of that. Yeah, but you know what? to read the book um and this is this is what i think um you know was talked about in daniel where he says seal the book till the end uh, i think um if you try and read that book with you know jc in your heart then you can't you can't yeah, understand yeah. it, it, yeah, it, it might, yeah. so so yes from their perspective um the old testament is old um out of date and um essentially just a reference book for the new new testament you know so no they can't they, they won't be able to, to read it properly yeah but that that's what i'm thinking that what what we're you know the nations have to understand that we're the most highest people and where we will be acknowledged as a wise and understanding people because we were told that this book is our wisdom to the nations 
So therefore, you do not have any Christians standing up and saying what we're saying. You're seeing some of these Christian pastors now saying some unprecedented things. Yes. They're only saying it because, believe it or not, a lot of these European pastors are listening to everything we say. Yeah, because I've seen quite a few now coming out. Yeah, they're listening the to what audience. we're saying. Yeah. They're, they're listening saying... to what, what we're saying, and they're going into the book and they're reading it. And it's making sense to them. Like I've, oft, I've often said, if the most high can't make sense being the highest level of intelligence, then no man can make sense. And mm -hmm. when you read the quote-unquote New Testaments, it just runs you around in circles, and it makes no sense. The most high is very direct about how he goes about things. Rewards and punishment. These are these laws. Walk within the confines of them. If you don't, I'm going to deal with you this way. And he's very specific about how he's going to do it. So none of his instruction is confusing to the children of Israel. It's very straightforward. Uh, so therefore, you know, a lot of these pastors, like I've said, they're going in and they're saying some things like, huh, he didn't say this on his own because this is not even part of his doctrine based on what he supposedly believes. So uh, they're listening and they're taking time to go into that book. And many of them will turn. I'm thinking there's a lot of these uh, individuals. That's why, you know, our job is to teach the nation's righteousness. They will turn. Some of them will. Indeed. And I'm, I'm finding when I give, you know, I'm giving these talks that, uh, well, most of them do um, cover the Bible um, or the Old Testament. I don't ever go into the New Testament. Um, and, you know, uh, mainly they're, they're all white audiences I give these talks to. And, um, you know, the, the perspective that they're not used to um, is, is resonating with them. They're understanding um, what I'm saying um you know my, my my perspective on on the old testament um it, they come up to me and told me it makes sense yeah. and it never made sense to them when they when they went to church yeah it's a bunch of lies i mean that like i said that's the beauty of the most high he's going to make sense uh he's the highest level of intelligence if he can't make sense no one else can so once it's presented by the children of israel then the nation is beginning to look at this thing and say, you know what, this makes sense. And this is part of them acknowledging that we are this great and understanding people because we are the people that can go into this book, this Excalibur, if you will, and we can wield it when no one else can. Uh, and, and, and they will, I, I would assume that as we deliver this word, not only to the children of Israel, but to the people of the nations, we will do it in such a manner that the Most High will guard our mouth, that we, we deliver it in a manner that it can be received and will certainly put a change in their spirit that they may be able to receive it and understand it and pursue it. Uh, and so therefore, a man that's delivering this message, he's got to be, he's got to be vetted. And when I say that, the Most High is going to have to really try his heart, so to speak, because if you're going to be teaching this people righteousness, First of all, you've got to be moving in righteousness yourself. If not, it's hard for you to come before people speaking of the most high's righteousness and you are an unrighteous man yourself, he'll expose you. You won't last long. So uh, any man that's trying to do that, it's a dangerous proposition in the first place. But I think people will be able to sense your sincerity and they will go into that book and validate what you have said and they will see clearly what this makes sense and that may incline their heart to walk after it. Yeah, it's quite funny when I uh, when I started waking up to uh, to to the, the uh, Book of Remembrance. Um, I started talking about it, and um, a, quite a famous um, Christian started having a go at me because he said, um, "How is it you think you know what uh, what this book says?" Um, after what three at the time three years of reading it i've been reading it for 40 years yeah. uh, um i think i directed him to and i can't remember what psalm it is but uh you know the, the psalm that says the most high gave his words and understanding to israel yeah and, yeah, yeah the children of israel, yeah he's not a, he's not dealt so with any other nation that's yeah. the one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But and what, what was his what was his response after that uh, there was no response, you know. Yeah, he's, he was, hmm? 
I said, there can't be any. What can he say after that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was, you know, um, okay, the guy's name is Rob Skiba, and he's, you know, he does a lot of um, videos and stuff, or he did a lot of videos. He died recently. Um, and we we, we, ever, we kept coming, you know, at loggerheads because, um, you know, my interpretation of the old, uh, the old Testament was very, very different from his. And, you know, he's from Texas, and he says he's an Ephraimite. And oh, um, okay. I was trying to say, well, actually, I don't think you are an Ephraimite, to be honest. But, you know, it's possible, but I don't think you are. Um, yeah, so um, his his contention was that I can't possibly know um, very much because I've only been reading it for three years or so at the time. Yeah, well, you know, with a lot of these these other people, a lot of our enemies, they don't care if you've been reading it a thousand years. They're whole premise is that I'm more intelligent than you and you are not as intelligent as I am. Uh, and mm -hmm. they don't care if you're older than them or younger than them. So this is just normal behavior. But what I do know is that the book of remembrance is the one book that empowers the children of Israel, that where it strengthens us as a family. Under those rules and guidelines, those are the only rules by which we can get along with each other. And those that those rules are the only rules by which we can get along with anyone else in the nation. Mm. Plus that, that's it. Plus you got all the other books as well. Uh, Jews, Jasha, you got all so many. You got the other books, but people can relate to 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 uh, the Book of Remembrance. Yeah, I mean the other books. I mean, look, I don't have you know many people read up the other books. And I, I don't have a problem with whatever anyone reads. The bottom line is, is that for us to get out of this mess, we got to turn to this law. And, and that's and as long as we can agree to that, to hey, look here, man, uh, you're not going to try to lie, steal, murder, and try to commit another man's goods and lay down with his wife and lay down with children and do all these other foul things that the Most High has laid out. These are just foul behaviors when you look at them. Lay down with your uh with your son's with your son's girlfriend or with your son's uh with your son's wife or your brother's wife and these types of things. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just straight up foul when you look at it. Uh and mm -hmm. it makes sense to anyone that's thinking. So in regards to what someone may read, if we're gonna say, you know what, hey, look here, man, we gotta stick to these laws. This is the only thing that's gonna bring this family together. And the only way that we're gonna come under the umbrella of some type of commonality with these nations, they will have to follow it too. But keep in mind, they would have to turn to it because if we look at the behavior of the nations, they have gone around the earth, murdering people and taking their land. That's just what they've done. Now, this whole Israeli situation, in my view, this is the last stand of the European in, in, in Israel right now because this is the end of this circus. You've taken this circus where you and your people have gone around throughout the land, throughout the earth, murdering people and taking their substance. And this is your last stronghold. The Arab man was the toughest man for him to conquer. Did it to the Africans, did it to the Chinese, to the Polynesians, to whomever else. But that Arab man and his Islam has been strong and has been a thorn inside the Christian, a.k.a. the European. And so this is his law. This is his last stand. This is his last outpost. His last colonial outpost. And once this is uprooted, he could stand by. They're cousins, though, aren't they? Essentially. I mean, who is this? You know the 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 um you know the Muslims and the and the Europeans. They're cousins, aren't they? Well, they're, they're not too they're not too far off. Because when I'm looking at when I look at a quote unquote an Iranian, right? Many of them, to me, they look like Europeans, like regular Europeans. Many of them look, I mean, I grew up with some Indians. I know what an Indian look like. A lot of them look like Indian men. Uh, mm -hmm. The men from Afghanistan and places like that, they look like just Indians. Uh, and I want to say a lot of them speak Farsi in Afghanistan. So I'm thinking that there is some type of connection between these people. Uh, however, it's 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 going to be broken up. Our families were broken up. So whatever kind of conglomerate they've got and agreements that they've got, as far as them coming together in cahoots in Psalms 83, the most high is going to break up those agreements as well. But I would not be surprised if you run their bloodlines and it's very similar because 
the man in the man that's sitting in Iran, he looks like a European to me. Well, yeah, you know, if you if you look at I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, but no, no, after you. Okay, I'm just saying about living amongst these people, you know, in the area that I am, I'm at right now, it's not so much that they look like them, they act like them too. They have very similar <laughs> characteristics, you know, very similar, similar characteristics that that barbaric animalistic type of behavior. They display the same thing, you know, like I said. And most of them are mixed. When you look at the history, they do have ties to Euro Gentile uh, descent, um, deeply rooted. Arab just means mixed people. So they're mixed with a bunch of other things. And, uh, and often, nine times out of 10, part of their bloodline is also mixed with Euro Gentile, according to my studies. But, you know. You only have to look at um, India and what they call the Aryan invasion. Yeah. So. Um, you look at North India and you'll see the Ca Caucasian looking Indians it is and south. going yeah. south. Yes. And if they're you look black. at, they're, they're black, <laughs> they're us essentially. But if you look at the, um, the caste system, right, you know, you, you, you got the Brahmins at the top and, and the untouchables at the bottom. But if you, if you look at them all sort of um, laid out, you know, with the uh, examples of, of each caste, you'll see a color gradation. It goes from the white ones at the top, and then it goes all the way down to the to the black ones who look like us at, right at the bottom. Yeah, so, um, so yes, the, the mixing, you know, is, is real to make, a, to make a hierarchy, the same hierarchy that, uh, you know, the Western world has, has put everywhere pretty much. So we've, uh, we're, we're at the bottom of the barrel in all of these nations. These are the types of things that, as the Most High said, he's going to raise us up in the midst of these nations and we're going to be given honor and praise. That's before we leave here. So it has to be made plain to all the nations exactly who we are while we're still in it. That's before we even leave. So, uh, Aren't you seeing that in the media? Aren't you seeing that in the media, though? Um, the where you know there are black faces popping up in in adverts everywhere. and every, everywhere <laughs> yeah, yeah so don't you think that's a kind of shifting towards that time I, I i'm thinking so because i told some of my buddies uh many years ago at my job i said these things are changing and watch the company i work for you at no time would you see one of their videos with a black person in it. <laughs> now it's everywhere but but the thing is is that as they begin to push us up front, right? What they're doing also, they're pushing the homosexual up there too. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's it's yeah, right. It's it's a double-edged sword. It's a double-edged sword. Uh now that we're allowing to let black people or or, or the, the Israelite, but we'll just use black people because folks are accustomed to that term. Well, if we're gonna let the black person be here. We've got to let every manner of degenerate be here too, and that's yeah. just where we, that's just where we are. Oh well, they've got to be. They have to be pushing that uh, that degeneracy anyway, because that's that's what happens whenever their empire starts to fall. You know, it always devolves into you know pedophilia and uh, and all the other stuff that goes with it. Um, so, I, I, I perhaps. Yes, you're seeing all the, the homosexual parts going in there, but perhaps that's that's part of the push to to um, you know, put our faces out there. Um, as you said, we we're going to be recognised as as who we are. Um, you know, what did I see the other day when somebody puts in um, does a uh, image generation on AI about pretty much anything? They're going to get black people. Really. <laughs> Yes, so um, huh. they were complaining about it. They were saying, like, uh, you know, um, make me an image of a king, and it will be a black person as a king. Um, make me an image of whatever, and it, they, yes, they're saying, what's going on? It's all black people. Well, wow, I got a question, uh, real quick. Um, you brothers being in the UK and in, in that in the Europe, Europe area, how how are our people fairly treated there in the UK? I'm not talking about the thing because it seems like it's the same thing going on in America. Like, you know, they try to push down and try to suppress the oppression of our people. And the only thing they'll show you on the big screen TVs is your rappers, your stars and all this type of stuff. 
Is it the same thing going on over there in the UK? How how are the people being oppressed in the UK? It's the same thing, but different. <laughs> um, essentially, the the racism is is kind of under under the covers. So, um, I, I'll give you an example of uh, something that happened to me. Um, I got I um, got a job um, um, interview in it was in Dublin in Ireland. Okay, now you know to get to Ireland, it's a it's a flight or a, or a, or a, a boat ride. So the interviews were were you know, over the phone. Now you know my 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 family name is Murphy, yeah, and um, you can't tell from my voice what color I am. <clears throat> so I had several telephone interviews, um, did all their tests and, and and what have you, and they offered me the job. All right, so. They said they were going to fly me over so um, and, and meet the team and everything. So I flew over, yeah, and while I was at the airport, I phoned them up, and we were having a chat, and I said, right, I'll see you in about an hour or so. I got over there. I was sitting in the lobby, and uh, the guy came out, walked straight past me to the receptionist and said, you know, is, is Mr. Murphy here yet? And she nodded towards me. And as he turned around, it was like um, it was like a cartoon. His jaw literally dropped to the floor <laughs> when he saw me. Um, he took me to you know into the into the offices and said, oh, I'm, "I'm sorry, Mr. Murphy. We've uh, we've got we had an internal candidate who's uh, we've given a job to, the job they'd offered me to me and I'd accepted." <laughs> uh, oh, so, wow. so the point is that if it was a face to face interview. I would have never have known the situation because they would have said, sorry, you're not, you're not suitable. And that's it. I would never have known, but because of this, you know, it was, it was very stark that that's what's going on. Um, but that's, that's what, what happens. It's not upfront like it is in America. It is all undercover and uh, you know, nobody's talking about it. And so it doesn't exist. Hmm. Real quick. Also, do they do they have a like a redlining system amongst the uh, you know in, in London and places like that as well, where they pretty much entrapping all the the so called you know the the Africans, Americans or African Europeans, whatever you want to call them, into these ghetto areas. Is this similar to that as well, as far as the United States? Not not really, not really. I, I mean, it, it does um, break down into you know economic you know, economic worth. I mean, obviously they don't expect too many black people to, to be uh, pretty well off, but yes, there are a lot who are, who are quite, doing quite well, but, um, but there's no, there's no red line barrier. Um, when I, when I was in New York, New Jersey, um, I found out that I'd moved to a red line area and I didn't know, I didn't know until I left, mm. but, um, but I was, I was paying, um, you know, I got a mortgage, which uh, I I found out later that you know you're not likely to get a mortgage being black, but I got a mortgage, but I was paying I was paying four thousand dollars a month, where uh, my neighbours were paying something in the hundreds a month, and for the for similar similar house, mm. um, so yeah you know if if I'd known I didn't know the phrase redlining at that point, and I, I I don't know that. I don't know that phrase. First time I've heard that. Um, was it, well, was it essentially, in- they they draw on a map, you know, red uh, red areas and green areas, and uh, you know the essentially the red areas, no black people were allowed to live there, and and so there's wow. all policies, you know, to restrict mortgages or or make uh, you know extremely high repayments so you don't stay there very long. Like, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. well, like in the UK, they got areas where. They've got the black areas, and then they've got the Asian areas. Then they then what what not necessarily the black areas and the Asian areas, but people still move out of them areas to live anywhere they want to live. Yeah, you can you but, can in England go wherever you want in England if you you know, but yeah, um, if you're financially yeah. able. Yeah. Yeah, well, redlining, you know, I mean people can still choose to go where they want, but because of the system, like uh uh Oh, the Dave just said, you know, not being able to get access to certain loans, or if you can get a loan, it's at high interest rates. That's systematically designed to keep people into ghetto areas. So, you know, I want to know if that's the same system that they use in the UK, 
you know, like he just mentioned about a job interview whenever, you know, they keep, you know, pretty much locking them out the, you know, out, out the job market, not giving them access to certain wealths and things like that. Um, do you, you, do you see, is that the predicament that the people are in or are they just choosing to live wherever they want? Um, I, I think people still can choose where, where they want. It's, um, you know, f I think more so in England, if you, if you've got the talent, you know, they'll, they'll see past, they'll see past the color. Um, mm. and, uh, what's really fortunate is that we're, we're pretty talented <laughs> at pretty much anything. So, um, so no, it's not, it is, it goes on to an extent, but it's not the same as America. You know, um, back in the oh, I'll say this much. Uh, keep in mind that these quote unquote the people, the European that's in America and the European that's in England is the same man. So his ideas are not going to change much. It's going to be the same thing. Now we speak of the devastating effect that sanctions have had on Iran, on Russia, and everywhere else. No one, and I repeat, absolutely no one has been sanctioned more than black people. Period. The House of Israel, those of us scattered to the four corners, we have been sanctioned and continue to be sanctioned today. Uh, and we have the history to prove it. I don't care where you find us. So, uh, you know, his unrighteousness and his way of doing things in a manner that's contrary to the most highest law, statute, judgments, and precepts, there's a track record of it. He has not changed his policy from one place to another. He may change it as far as its name, but as far as the execution, it's all the same. Yeah, because when wherever you see the black uh, black people all over the world, like if you go to the Philippines, you see the black people just stay in the mountain because it was getting persecuted. Yeah, it's oh, again. Yeah. India, India is the same. So yeah. it's like that. So that's uh, I mean, I'm gonna tell you what. I had an interesting conversation with a fellow that, I, that I've known for quite some time. Uh, white, white fellow. We've had some great conversations. Good guy. Uh, and we were having this conversation and I was telling him some things pertaining to the book, right? And then he, he paused for a second and he came over and he asked me, he said, are you trying to tell me I'm in trouble? I said, yeah. Yeah, you're in trouble. But this is what you can do to try to get yourself out. Right? <laughs> and so I you know, I, I told him, hey, you're in, your, you're in your house, man. You see this thing going off in left field, turn to the most high with your whole heart and your whole soul and turn to that, what they call the Old Testament. And uh, he was very appreciative of that. So it's amazing. Not everyone you talk to want to fight you on this thing. A lot of folks are just listening and they will ask you some really interesting questions because when you speak to them and you do it in a manner that's correct, it provokes thought because you're going to speak to them in a manner that's very common sense. And then they start thinking, okay, you can tell them something without you actually telling them the whole 100%. You give them enough to where he knew good and well based on what I've said that, okay, I'm in trouble. And so therefore he wanted to ask exactly, well, how do I go about getting myself out of this mess, right? He didn't say, well, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. He understood clearly because there's one thing that many Europeans like to do is that they like to separate themselves from the group punishment. They want to be part of any type of group rewards, but come time for group punishment, all of a sudden they want to be individuals. Well, I didn't do this and I didn't do that. However, when they uh when they when the spoils are being handed out, they don't have a problem sticking out both hands. That's it. Dang, uh, you might. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, when you when you were saying that um you know that you know. Are you? Am I in trouble? Yeah. Um. For the most part, they know they're in trouble. Oh yeah, yeah. They got yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Um. There's a there's a comedian, Louis C.K. Right, and uh, he did a he did a little skit that starts with, uh, "Oh, I love being white." Yeah, being white is thoroughly good. <clears throat> so he's so he's like making jokes about being white, and um, he says at the end. Yeah, but uh, you know, for now we know that yeah. we're going to pay hard for this. Yeah, yeah. I've seen and everyone's yeah. laughing. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's laughing because they know, yeah. they know that. Uh, yeah, they've they've had it good for a long while, yeah. right? But uh, they're coming to an end, and it's uh, it's not going to be pretty. Yeah, but 
I, I often think to myself, right, what type of person sees the things? I mean, I'm seeing what's going on in Gaza, and that's unsightly. It's just not a it's not a pleasant thing to see. Uh, and I'm over here. How do you see that type of brutality, killing, murdering, raping, et cetera, et cetera, during the days of slavery? How do you see that taking place in the in your very sight, in close proximity, and you actually go along with that? Uh, and my flip, the flip thought to that is this, with a lot of our people. We, uh, it's hard for me to fathom that someone could be around that and be accepting of that behavior. But at the same time, when I look at it based on the book, this man is doing exactly what he's commanded to do. He was commanded to be the enforcers of our punishment. And so therefore, when we start trying to ask this European for righteousness, first of all, he doesn't know what that is, so he can't give it to us. But most importantly, it was not his job to give us righteousness anyway. We received that from the Most High and we rejected it. So therefore, they were brought in as enforcers of our punishment. So when we're trying to get this man to do something that's righteous, besides the fact that he doesn't know it anyway, and it's not his job, that would be akin to us asking that man to go against the instruction that he got. So our instructions were to follow the law, statute, judgment, and precepts. We figured, you know what, we're not going to do it. So here comes this man doling out our punishment because his job, his task, his commandment was to punish us. And so now we're of the mindset to where I don't want to follow the most high's law, statute, judgment, and precepts, and I'm going to entice this man not to do it either. You kind of understand where I'm coming from with that? Yeah. yeah. Well, is it, is it about the person's soul? That's kind of a little bit dark soul some people have got. Us. They haven't got no empathy at, at all. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even, I don't see it like that is my view. I see it to where, I mean, all of us, you guys are living in Europe. I've lived in Germany all my teenage life. So uh, I've been around many different types of people. And I can attest to you based on my life experience, all white people are not bad that I've met. That's just me. Uh, so I can't say, hey, every last white man is evil. I can't say that. It's not been my life experience. Okay. However, I'm thinking that the Most High had put a spirit on a specific group of people to carry out a task. And they're going to do it. And the man has, has done an excellent job. As a matter of fact, he's going overboard. Yeah. And and that's a problem though, isn't it? That's the they've gone too far. So yeah, now they're gonna have to pay for that. Yeah. The most I said, I was only mad with my people just a little bit, but you <laughs> you've taken this thing too far. So uh that's where we are right now. But I mean, when you look at it. I'm, I'm thinking if there's one thing that could make an Israelite lose his mind is for him to sit back and try to make sense out of the wickedness that he sees. Because wickedness makes no sense. It's confusing to you. You would wonder, why would this man kill another man for a pair of shoes? Or why would you go into another man's house? You're a healthy man. There's nothing wrong with you. You can go work. Why would you go into this man's house, rob him, and kill his family? That is mind-boggling to me right mm -hmm. so wickedness confuses a righteous man like why would you even do that but we have to keep in mind that the most high Chris created the destroyer that he may destroy and there are those who are that's their purpose and we have to get comfortable with that absolutely absolutely <clears throat> and um as i said i'm waiting for i'm trying to wait for this day of vengeance because um, there's some extraordinary things, according to Isaiah, extraordinary things are going to happen, like the return of the giants. Um, I can almost see that happening, actually. I don't know about you guys. Return of the giants? I don't, I don't know. But okay, so <clears throat> in Isaiah, I can't remember exactly where, it says um, the, you know, the, the mighty men will return. Oh. Um, and when you look at it in the same passage in the Septuagint, it basically says the giants will return. So Mighty Man is a, um, yeah, a, a synonym for giants. 
So yeah, yeah. In the book of Joshua, they call him a mighty when they, when they was fighting against the mighty men. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, Lee. Brother Lowe. Yeah, I'm over here. I got, I got, I got baby issues, man. My, my little <laughs> one is. <laughs> I don't know if I can hear, but yeah, she. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm here though. I'm here. Okay, just checking, just checking. So, this Giants thing. A lot of people are talking about the Giants. I've, I've, I mean, Brother Eli has spoken about the Giants. Look, this is just me talking. We've been delivered before. No Giants needed. Uh, so, you know, if that's going to be, I guess I'll see me one big old Giant or two. <laughs> All right? <laughs> so, 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 but for me personally, I'm not looking for some Giants to come out here and bust heads. Most high is going to have men bust each other's heads. You know, in times past, he's had one man pull out his sword against the next. I mean, the most high doesn't need this. Is just once again, this is me talking, right? I don't see it to where the most high sending giants to deal with these armies. I'm thinking they're going to be blowing each other up and killing each other. And sometimes they're going to be killing each other in the midst of their own, of their own, uh, their own militaries. So we'll see. Either way, nothing trumps the fact that we have to return back onto that law, whether you believe the Giants are coming or not. So that's where, that's, I always come back to the common denominator. Whether I believe in Giants or not, or the Giants are coming or not, has nothing to do with me delivering myself from this mess via returning onto the Most High's Law, Statute, Judgments, and Precepts. So once again, it's showtime. If, we're, if there's going to be Giants, I'll be able to see it. Yeah, me personally, um, you know, one of the first, I think this was an ancient war tactic that Yah actually used in the book of Chronicles, the situation, I think it was Jehoshaphat, when he had three nations coming against him, and then they turned on each other, yeah. killed each other off, and he delivered them like that, right. So to me, Yah, that's how I see Yah delivering, and Yah putting, swinging that sword, is by putting these nations against each other. Just like he told Esau, they chase blood. Now blood going to pursue them is going to chase them. So all these nations, whether the Arabs is there, the Euro Gentiles is there, they all have taken land by bloodshed. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah, they took in over North Africa by bloodshed. The Europeans have taken over Southern Africa by bloodshed. Places like the Congo, you know, and places like that. Um, in all over the world, America, South America, they have, they have led by the sword. So they chase with the sword. You, you know that famous saying, you live by the sword, you die by the sword. And I think that that's how they will be destroyed. You know, um, all of them will turn their weapons on each other and they will slaughter each other. And besides, the Most High didn't say we are his battle axe. Mm -hmm. I'm 5'11". There's nothing <laughs> giant about me. You know what I mean? So, I mean, so if we're the battle axe, at some point we're going to have to do some fighting. Uh, and we will be strengthened in that regard. So, like I said, if a man believe in giants, I ain't mad at him. Uh, I don't see a giant coming to fight on our behalf. I've seen the Most High have read where the Most High have delivered us in times past. No giants needed. So that's just where I stand with that. But yeah. once again, in regards to what a man believes, this is the, this is showtime. He's going to show us. That way we have no doubt of exactly what's what. And then a man will have to make up his own mind, his own heart, whether he believes what he's seeing or not. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, when you say that the most high is when he's about to reveal a lot. Um, even the land, I know I was I heard that conversation up, but I was just taking some doing some things with my daughter. But yeah, yeah, I was gonna show the world without a doubt where the land is. You know, um, to me, I always believed in advocate, I was always an advocate for traveling. When you want to deal with the geographic geographics and you know uh, places and this and that, uh, the best best to get boots on the ground. And this is just for people who's listening. You know, just do some traveling, do some traveling to these places, see for yourself. Um, use the book, you know, different sources. Because I used the book of Joshua when I was in the land of Israel, and that was basically my roadmap. I just followed the, the you know the borders of the tribe. That's how I found out what Jerusalem was. Um, you know, that's a long story in itself, but you know, like I said, just researching and, 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 and using the source that the Most High gave us, the Book of Joshua. But yeah, I'm just saying that to agree with you, Elder Lee. Yeah, he's going to reveal everything in his due time. 
you know, and how he's going to do things. Here's my, here's my question. What do you see happening next? All right, brothers, what do you see the next the next move being? I'm thinking, for me, I'm thinking Israel, his pride and his pomp is going to cause it to make a, a error that's going to bring about its destruction. We're too far gone now. There will be no two-state solution. You had 70-something years, 75, 80 years by which you could have done that if you actually meant it. Mm -hmm. America made plain that it will not send troops uh, to support them. And you cannot trust America because it's, they lie too much. So nothing that they're saying can be counted upon. They know it, along with all of their quote-unquote allies know this. And us being their victims, we know this all too well. So uh, what do you all see that's that that's more than likely to come here over the we next do. few days and weeks? I don't know. I think America and the UK and Europe, they know if, if, if Iran gets properly involved, China's behind Iran. And also Russia. Yep. So they can't they can't they can't defeat them. Impossible to be, defeat China by itself. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. so that's why they might not get involved in America. I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, what yeah. I see is that um I see that it's gonna be uh this is like the elderly said, this, this is gonna escalate. Um, the pride and the arrogance and the stubbornness, even when he sees something wrong, he because of his stubborn, he'll still make the wrong move. Um, his jaw is confusing this man. So he he I think that he will attack Iran. You know, maybe it might be in a few weeks, maybe it might be in a month, but he will do it. Um, I think that that's going to cause a major escalation in this area. And uh yeah, so I and that's what I'm seeing. You know, be prepared. I think that this rest of this year is going to be catastrophic a catastrophe in this area. Um, also, even in the United States, you got your president election coming up. Donald Trump is facing all types of charges. He's in the first appearance of a president in criminal court and I don't know, maybe forever. But you got a lot that's going to be going on there in the political field as far as the United States of America. So I'm interested in looking at both sides, like what's going on in America, what's going on over here. And both is, is not looking too good for this man. Well, um, <clears throat> what I what I'm I kind of see is that uh, kind of agree with uh, Brother Lee because uh, um, I think Israel is going to be emptied. I think um, I think uh, because Ukraine, um, I, I think it's 2013, um, gave the Israelis the right to return. They 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 literally announced it. They've got they've got the unlimited right to return to Ukraine admitting that that was their area before that's where they actually lived um so i think that's going to be that's going to be utilized ukraine's pretty much emptied anyway because you know all the refugees from there so um you know the the israelis are going to scurry back to kazaria and um you know israel will be emptied um i think donald donald trump will be the president I, I've been saying this, you know, he's going to be the last president of the United States. And um, at some point after he uh, he gets into power, um, America is going to disappear. I still believe America is going to just be wiped off the map. Um, and I don't think it's going to be through war um, because I know you don't, I don't know, you know, you don't follow the uh, second Esdras, but uh, you know, probably, but uh you know, it says there about the uh, the middle head of the three headed eagle um, just disappearing suddenly without a fight. So I think uh, you know we've still got that, which will be a significant event if Mer America just suddenly disappears. That will throw the whole world into chaos. Um, so yeah, that's my view. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got some interesting, time, interesting times ahead. Uh, it's it's dicey now as it is. We're, but you know, not only we're we seeing what's going on with these Muslim nations, we're seeing exactly who's selling out the people. But the cleansing of the land of Israel, it's got to be made plain exactly who these Palestinians, who these people are as well, because there are many different types of Palestinians. So we're seeing that judgment is being brought upon them. That's what's happening. We can't look at this any other way. Uh, we'll also see exactly what a judgment will be on these 
quote unquote, Israelis, because many of them have already come back to the United States and, re and many of them have already returned back to their respective European enclaves. So they return back to these many different places where they're from. Some of them are still holding the line and some of them are actually, we're seeing now for the first time ever where the earth is turning against them. Uh, popular opinion has changed. Uh, I want to say South Africa is actually presenting legislation to punish those who return from fighting there because many of these uh, Israelis have left America and have gone and joined the IDF to fight. So uh, we're seeing nations now coming up with some form of legislation to punish them uh, and to kind of restrict this dual citizenship that many of them hold. So we're seeing some unprecedented moves as it pertains to people of the nations speaking up against the Israelis, as the book states that they would. Absolutely. Yeah. The book definitely mentions that, you know, everybody will know them as the borders of wickedness and it's yeah. being revealed for everybody's eyes. And that's uh that's that's certainly what we're we're seeing right now. Uh but like I said, the, the run out is going to be interesting because once they run out of that land, like I said, the, the multi-billion gazillion dollar question is still going to be, well, man, we we have bankrolled these people. We have, you know, we've told the whole earth that they're the people of God. And uh, this is a bad deal. This is a bad bet. Now, it's not them because they've been ran out and killed. Then who is it? And I think that's where, you know, the fear will come upon them to where they, they're not going to know what to do. Yeah, that'll have to happen soon. I think that <laughs> happen yeah. soon. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. uh, that's I, I would I don't want to be the guy <laughs> to <laughs> to find out that I've been spitting in the face of God's people. I don't want to be that guy. No, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not going to be good. Yeah, I don't want to be that. Let me ask you a question real quick. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Who was talking? Go ahead, brother Dawe. Go ahead. I want to ask you real quick your perspective. What do you think is going to do you think that these Israelis who are, because a lot of them are now fleeing the land through airplanes, going to different lands, uh -huh. what do you think th their mindset will be once their um, brothers in the land get run out and judged? How do you think that they will finally admit that they're not Israel, or you think they will continue to push that narrative? Here's what I think. Matter of fact, not even what I think, what I know. I think they know from jump that they're not Israel. They're, they, they know that. They're just playing along. Look, if you go into the land of Israel, Israel is very, very similar like America. You have a conglomerate of different types of people from mm -hmm. different nations, quote unquote, different countries. You have some straight up Asian looking people in there talking about they're from uh, the tribe or whatever, right? You have some Africans that's in there saying that they're from the tribe or whatever. You've got people from Argentina. So here's what I think. Israel really is. It's a colonial state, simply no different than America, Australia, and anywhere else, where some Europeans go into the land, put some Europeans in there, open up the doors wide, and tell all the other white people of the earth, come on in. Uh, and so therefore, they know exactly who they are, but it's beneficial to play this, we're the children of Israel, or we're the people of God, in order for them to get these benefits. However, when it's when the benefits run out, they will change, they will change course. And I, like I said, a lot of I, I'm thinking a lot of these Ethiopians that's been taken into the land, right? And I've experienced all this uh sterilization, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think they're the children of Israel, no way. I think you got a bunch of your a bunch of uh people that were sitting in the land in Ethiopia that said, you know what? I can get out of this, I can get out of this 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 poor state that I'm in, all I have to do is say I'm X, Y, Z, and I'm going to be taken to this quote-unquote Western world, this colonial settlement, and my life can be better. And be, I'm thinking the punishment you're paying once you get there when they did all these foul things to you is because of you had the nerve to pretend to be the children of Israel in the first place. So, so you think the Hamites... I'm thinking a lot of those people in that land are there is an opportunistic grab. Wow. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean this in this third world country, 
I can scream that I'm a Jew and I can get in this land and all of a sudden my my class, my status can be elevated. Yeah. I mean, so who's not gonna who's not gonna go for that? But mm. there's a price to pay for it. So I'm thinking that's all you've got. But once the gig is up, then everyone is gonna be up there admit, yeah, I only did this because I wanted the benefits. And uh, as they start seeing the body bags and as the earth starts changing its sentiment towards them, it's 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 not going to be a shocker to them because they already know this. Okay. Um, chaps, I'm going to have to uh, head out in a minute, actually, because uh, I'm, I'm running out of power. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get ready to go get out of here, too. I got this baby. I'm doing the best I can with it, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um it, it's it's been fabulous talking to you all again as usual yeah, um, and uh um i hope to catch up with you again very soon um it's good to hear all, all your perspectives perspectives and all this you know as i said you know you don't we don't get to fellowship very often um you know um locally uh it's good to fellowship with you guys um you know virtually so okay. um yeah, uh, take yeah. care, guys. I think everybody's going to go anyway because we all got things to do. Okay. Cool, but I, at, I say this, uh, always a pleasure. I'm glad that most I have kept you all uh, and keeping your eyes open and also uh, giving us an opportunity to get together that we may speak to the people that they may be encouraged uh, because many of our people are stuck in these lands. So when the hard times hit, we're going to be hit twice as hard. However, the Most High has extended his sanctuary to us via his law. And we will be provided for and all that we, we we need, all that is necessary for us will be available to us. And so uh, us getting together and, and having a conversation like this as grown men uh, with righteousness before us, that's important that our people see this. Both our men, our women, and our youth. Indeed. Indeed. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Definitely agree. Well, yeah, you know, I just want to leave it off with this. Like those of you who are listening out there, you know, um, turn to the most high, yeah. You know, keep them laws like the elderly said, you know, and uh, get, you know, get in tune with yourself as well. Um, dig deep into your subconscious because the subconscious is the downfall of many men. You know, a lot of people fall from things they are unaware of. Um, so, um, like I said, just dig deep into yourself, meditate on the most high, keep them laws. The laws will be your foundation. That will be the foundation that you will build upon you know, to, to elevate your, your level of consciousness and to be able to see everything that the Most High is doing. So this is some tough times we're living in, um, but you're going to elevate your consciousness in order to be able to make it through these times. So, uh, yeah, just stick to the law, you know, do what you got to do, live in righteousness, and uh, That's it. the Most High got you. Let me let me leave with this. Uh, peace and y'all bless also from Brother yes, Benai, man. I want to make sure that I get that out there real quick. He's on the okay. job right now. So uh where's brother Delvin, man? So we're missing him uh Yeah, with us yeah Del Delvin was working today. So let him know, let him know that yeah. uh, uh his presence was missed as well. So uh just giving you all uh the regards of Brother Benaya. And the all you know, praise yeah. most uh, yeah, peace to Brother Benaya and his family and uh Elder uh Delvin as well. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. All right, yeah. brothers. Peace and y'all bless. Yeah, peace and y'all bless. Yeah, bless we'll get together next time. And hopefully, okay. uh, you know, we're All not right. running and ducking from these bombs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all be easy. Everybody be out. Uh, All, right. All, okay. All right, peace and y'all bless. Peace and y'all bless. bless. Okay. Yep. Yes. Good.